Welcome to episode 19 of Lost Signals. I'm, my name's Daryl, that's JD. I'm already having issues with this. Like right off the hop. It's like <laughs> nothing's working right. It's like, why do I do things? Wait, when you interrupt yourself going, who the fuck am I? What the fuck is going on? <sighs> Dude, you okay? I don't think so. No, it's, no. It's Wednesday. It's, it is. It's it's the middle of the week. I got to work. I'm working like six out of seven days. It's like, what the, what the fuck am I doing? Anyways, how have you been? I'm I'm all right. <laughs> it's been a busy week. Uh, it's been entertaining. Um, I mean, just nothing but work and hair straight back. So that's all right. I don't have that issue. No. Well, I don't have Why do I? Hair. I'm looking at the stream. And by the way, if you want, you can always... Uh, watch us live as we record this live to tape on Twitch. I look like I have a bad tan. <laughs> it's uh, it, my, it, it's something. I think it's maybe something. It's the light. It's the light. It's the oh, light. I yeah. It's, it's a little. Uh, this shit. Holy, go. little, little oversaturated. I, I might have your brightness turned up a little bit. I'm gonna fix that now because, like, god damn, I look like I have a shitty spring on Florida tan. <laughs> Uh, it's a bit better. It's it's something. It's something. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're off to a rolling start here this week. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like it's just it's just whatever. It is what it is. I guess we're we're. I'm gonna start with this, and like it. We we were talking about this before the show. It's gonna be our weekly bullshit COVID talk. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much it. it it's exactly what it is. It's all bullshit now. We're all fucking tired of it. Uh, yeah. so the. Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Edmonton Elk both announced yesterday or on Monday. I can't remember. Um, but uh, you now, not starting this weekend, but uh, for the September 17th, you have to show either a negative COVID test or proof of double vaccinations. Good. I think that's a good thing. I know lots of people are like, oh, it's, it's they're them trying to control you. It's no, they just don't want to get a bunch <laughs> of people sick. Because, like, let's be honest, we're right in the middle of the fucking fourth wave here. Bad shit's yeah. happening here. Yeah. Like, like lots of cases and shit. So it's not, it's not good. So something like having a, uh, having to have proof, I don't care what the fuck is the difference. Yeah. You know. It, 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 it is mind-boggling frustrating uh, on the fact that, okay, let's just blow right past the fact that people, some people out there still think that COVID is a hoax. Fuck off. Secondly, COVID is very, very, very contagious. And yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like nothing compares to this. Zero. Sinead O'Connor can just <laughs> dive off of a fucking cliff into a glass of orange juice. Nothing compares to this. She didn't write that. Anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I know Prince did. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the fact that we are still dealing with it and the fact that it's still a thing in our lives and the fact that we are still having the people out there who are just like losing their minds over the fact that they don't want to take this proven and approved and certified prevention to getting it, having it being so serious it could potentially kill you. Yeah. Or so serious that it'll affect you for the rest of your life, however short that may now be. And also to not put the stress on the hospitals, the doctors, the nurses, the care aides. So, so right with that, like I read, I have a bunch of friends that are nurses and whatever, and like they're posting stuff. Like there is no ICU beds in Saskatchewan right now. Like none. None. Yeah. Like, like, we, like I said, we're in the middle of the fourth wave and they're, we're short on hospital beds again. So yeah. And, and things are desperate in Northern Health in British Columbia. Yeah. And like, I, I, I too have people who are, like they're friends of mine and they work both in the hospital as well as long-term care aid. Uh, and like, it's, it is scary, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's, it doesn't make any sense how people don't seem to understand is this is not about control. This is about, this is about limiting the resources that are required. This is well, that's not that's, yeah. the, way, that's the way of putting it. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's about it's about res 
just not overwhelming the healthcare system and not making it so that our doctors and nurses and and hospital staff lose their goddamn minds. Oh, there's a lot of there's burnout right now, and you don't have to yeah. look my face like that. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's being so, annoying because he's hungry. Yeah. So I, a, a few, I have three friends in particular that come to mind right now, and all three of them are dealing with three different stages of. Uh, denial or acceptance or anything of the such. One of them uh, just recently got her first shot, and it, it it took a lot of soul searching for her. It took a lot of convincing from her employer, and it took a lot of bravery for her to do that. And I and I say that because she was very scared that this vaccine was actually going to make her sicker and considering that she already has an autoimmune deficiency or autoimmune disorder i should yeah. say yeah, yeah um there was some real fear there and that's, and then, that's granted i mean that, that's yes that's a legit concern yes yeah. but she she got her first shot and she was a little bit nauseous she had a headache uh she had a sore arm and it went away in three days so kudos to her I'd rather good, like good for her. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I'd rather do yeah. that than die, or you know, be like you know, have fucking like severe like respiratory issues for the rest of my fucking life. I'd rather. I'm 42 I, years old. I don't want to be stuck with like ED. <laughs> like I, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that that is that's a thing. So it's like yeah. Now now is that a thing or is that something that they're trying to you know scare the the old white people into thinking that if you if you don't. Get if you get COVID, your dick ain't gonna work, you know, to scare him into getting it. Which is a, a no. it's it's a scare tactic, but it's it would be a tactic that would work with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a right. thing. It really is yeah. a thing. Uh, so the other two people in my lives, one of them, a complete and utter mental breakdown, um, and like pleading and crying with one of her children, like her infant children, in her hands. Uh, saying like, you know, the, the world is coming to an end and this is all about control and manipulation and, and people need to wake up. And then she started sending me all this stuff oh. on Facebook and I, I, I had to shut her down immediately and like, Sweet, sweetie, sweetie, you and I, you and I have known each other for quite some time. Um, I am not the person to be talking to about this. I just, I a, you know, I work in media. Yeah. And B, I've been fully vaccinated for over two months now. Yeah. I just, oh, I, right. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, why? Like, whatever. Let, let's, let, let's, let's, enough of this. Cause you, you know how, it, because it can just fucking snowball and we do the whole episode about COVID and I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, which is why we were calling that the, uh, yeah. our weekly you know, bullshit segment. It's funny. We did a whole episode of it. I think it was episode four. We, that's the whole episode about COVID. It's like, yeah, that's the last time we're going to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a lie. But well, who'd have fucking thought that we'd be still in this situation yeah, months later? Anyways. Anyway, so at the end of last episode, we we kind of we were talking. I can't remember exactly what we were talking about, but uh, we brought up the topic of Jackass Four. Yes, Jackass so, Forever. Yes, is it Jackass Forever? Yes. Okay, it's a good name. It's a good name. Good name. Um, I'm really looking forward to this movie. Just. Because I like watching old people getting hurt. <laughs> and let's let's be honest, they're all old now. Like they're, they're in their fifties. Yeah. Like so there's obviously some controversy about this new movie coming out. Yeah. Like like Bam Marger is not a part of it. And I one hundred percent agree with their stance on him now. Yeah. Because he is a piece of shit. Yeah. Like so you, you remember back in the day, you know, he used to beat the shit out of his dad, you know, and like do stupid pranks around his house. You know, he always made fun of his dad for being fat and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen pictures of him lately? No. He's bigger than his dad now. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, maybe not bigger, but he is not a healthy person. Um, so he got kicked off of Jackass forever for being a drunk, being belligerent. Like, apparently... There was a no, they, they had a no alcohol uh, clause around filming this movie because like, I don't think it matters around Steve anymore, but I think it was for, for Bam Margera's sake to, you know, try and keep him sober and, you know, so they could actually, you know, get work out of him without him being uh, He's pissed. turning into his father. Yeah. 
Um, Holy smokes. Yeah, it's it's not good. So apparently, like, you know, he was showing up to set pissed and whatever. So they just fucking Johnny Knoxville and uh, I can't remember, uh, uh, Tremaine, Jeff Tremaine. There's like, okay. no, you're you're out. You're, you're off the movie. Get the fuck out of here. And I, and I don't think it was even like those two that put the stipulation in that like that he had to be sober. I think it was Paramount, like the like the producers or like mm-hmm. like the movie company. They're like, can't do it. So they fucking booted well, him off. And he's been let, let's let's. Let, 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 let's let's just let's just put this into perspective here paramount or the the production company the moving company who are financially backing this like they have a lot invested and so yep. you know maybe the first couple of jackass movies they're like yeah whatever the guys are gonna hurt themselves they've done it for a while now yeah they're in their 50s and they're like okay but there are some ground rules <laughs> yeah i i don't blame them at all for wanting to have these rules in there yeah I mean, just the liability alone. I mean, like if if somebody got killed on set, I mean, like that that's a huge money. So, yeah. But I think they put that in. It's like you know, if if somebody got killed on set, if they were sober, accidents accidents happen. But if he unfortunate, exactly, yeah. But if he was pissed, or you know, on on whatever, mm-hmm. like I think they were just doing it for his own sake, right? You know, like so he's not going to go out and fucking you know like whatever. Like it's not good. But yeah. like again, I fully support their their decision to to kick him off of the movie because of his substance abuse problems, yeah. and you know, and everybody's got their their own issues about things. But the way that he was handling all this, like blowing him up on social media and like all these fucking videos, it's like it's sad. Like yeah, like it it's like how far he fell after Ryan Dunn died is just disgusting. Yeah. You know, like he he never let it go, and I you, you know you you know it's his best friend. You don't blame him for that, but like. There's there's better ways to handle it. Well, Ryan Dunn died in an accident, did he not? Yeah, he was pissed though. Uh, and and that that's like further to the point of yeah. sober up, straighten up, have fun. Yeah, but 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 like, co- cover your ass too, right? Like you know, yeah, you, you, exactly. Like we're all like I'm all about having fun too, but like like to not be able to come home because of some stupid no. decision you made when you're pissed. It's like no, that's not that's not cool anymore. No, no, but, God no, no, yeah. When, uh, so yeah, like I know Steve O had been doing like and still does like a lot on social media, podcasts and, sh- and shows and interviews and stuff like that. And he, like, next to Johnny Knoxville, Steve O is like the, the he's, second tier mascot. He's, right? he's, the, he's like the face of it now. He, per, he is, like, you know, like but behind Johnny Knoxville, yeah. Yeah. Now, like Steve O like has been very very forthcoming with the fact that, you know, like when they first started out, I mean, they they were having some fun, but nothing got out of control. But then the movies well, started hitting and yeah. then the popularity started growing and then that's when the party mode started to kick in and things got out of control and like he admitted himself like, like he had a problem and he had to get help. Yeah. But more than just get help, he had to get the support and that's basically where everything came together for jackass forever is that okay we're we're still these incredible guys who do stunts and we have this in- wonderful following and we got tons of fans and we take care of ourselves but also we put our bodies on the line yeah. but also we're here as a family to support each other and try to stay as mentally healthy as possible yeah and when you're talking about substance abuse and alcohol abuse and just flat out abuse in general that it is mostly mental. What they do themselves is entertainment, but they are expecting to see and feel what they feel. Yeah. I think a lot of that, 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 you know, like the no, no booze, no substance stuff came actually, well, like it was right after he, uh, Steve-O got sober and then there was no alcohol on Jackass 3 at all. I, yeah. I remember watching like the documentaries about it. It's like, it's like, nah, can't do it anymore because at the time he probably could have relapsed. Um, yeah. If you get a chance, you should read Steve O's book. It's called Professional Idiot. Um, I, I read it in like a day. Like I think, <laughs> like it, it, it was a quick, easy read. But like, there's lots of interesting stuff. Like, like his dad, like he's half Canadian or some shit like that. His dad's Canadian. Like, he grew up in like Ontario or Quebec or something like out there. But uh, it's it's an interesting thing. Like, there there's a segment I remember just like on on his substance abuse problems is like he was he did whippets right like. Mm. He had a fucking like uh oh what the fuck is that? It's a 
for putting like uh, whipped cream on stuff. So he would like I like take these whippet canisters and he would just fucking put them into this thing and like just suck on this thing all day. He's like he he wanted to see if he could breathe directly off of whippets rather than fucking. Uh, He's ass. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, like he was doing like like a ton of whippets, but then he got clean. So it, it, it's good. If you get a chance, you should read his book. Um, he has two books out. Okay. Uh, one of them is Professional Idiot, which came out in 2011. Most recently in 2018, Steve-O Guilty as Charged. Uh, it is a quick read. It's just 41 minutes long. Oh, interesting. I might have yeah. to check that out. Just uh, put it on my Kindle or whatever, or my Kobo. Yeah. Uh, um, Trick Turbo's in the chat. How you doing, Trick? Hey, Trick. Um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, real, I'm pumped for this movie. I'll go probably go see it in the theaters just because... Um, just because, you know. I think I've seen like the last, like all of them in the theaters. Maybe not the first one, but like two and three for sure. So I'll go check it out. The, are... Jack asked the movies, the best place to watch them are the theaters. Oh, and yeah. I, I know this, I know this from experience. Yeah. So uh, when Jackass one came out, um, I was working for a radio station in Vancouver and I got tickets to the premiere and because it was hosted by uh, one of the radio stations, my sister radio station, 99.3 The Fox. And I went to a packed theater and watched Jackass the movie. And it was the most oh, hilarious, yeah. epic movie. The, like the reactions were incredible and loud and, and boisterous. And it was awesome. Yeah. And, couple couple months later when it came out on DVD this is way before streaming services I rented it yeah. and I, I wanted my girlfriend to watch it with me but she was like bumming around in the kitchen and doing whatever so I was like I'll just I'll just watch the movie boring as fuck <laughs> it, it, it definitely loses some of the charm watching it at home but like I've watched them a ton a ton of times at home too but it's just not it, it doesn't have the same effect when you're watching mm -hmm. it in a crowd. Yeah, but yeah, it is it is reaction movie. Yeah, hundred percent yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. There, you know, like on on that same vein, like we're we're kind of in a uh, a renaissance of like fucking sequel movies, unfortunately. Yeah. Which I mean, like there's a lot of stuff that's getting rehashed, but it seems like there's lots of stuff that's coming out that's going to be interesting. So like, we talked about this the other day, uh, the the new Ghostbusters movie. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Afterlife. Yes. With a lot of the original cast, including Bill Murray. So which who <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Like I've I've watched the trailer a ton of times. I mean it's got Paul Rudd in it. How and how can't you like not like Paul Rudd? You know? Like <laughs> what's the puppy doing? Uh he's chewing on one of his toys and knocking over a guitar. And your stand. guitar stand. Yeah. <laughs> But like, how can you not like, not like Paul Rudd? Paul Rudd's awesome. Yeah. Um. Um. But like, it's got like all like the original cast, like yeah. fucking Dan Aykroyd and Annie Potts, and apparently like Sigourney Weaver's in it, and maybe Rick Moranis. That, ooh, so, <laughs> that'd be interesting. Like yeah. right away, like but like I forget, like that movie's just about forty fucking years old. The first one, like nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Like we're like t like thirty eight years here. 37 yeah, yeah like yeah 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 well when it's coming out this year right it it was supposed to be earlier this year i can't remember the exact release date now um yeah. but but yeah so like all the trailers for it look really good yeah. um yeah and, and and like you know talking about the original cast and whatever like harold ramis um yeah. who was uh who was more than just one of the actors he was more than just egon he was behind the scenes he was yeah. a director was he not uh he he, he didn't direct that because Ivan Reitman did. Because, Ivan Reitman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Ivan Reitman's son directed this new one. Right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, Harold Ramis did direct a bunch of stuff. And I, he had a big hand in writing it. So, I mean, like, since he passed, I mean, that's kind of where the story maybe came from. Like, in the trailer, it says, like, well, when you're talking to the to his, like, Egon's daughter, it's like, when your dad passed, he left us this house with all this stuff in it. So, yeah. I'm pumped for it. I, 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 it's, I'm definitely going to see that one in the theaters. It is, it is one of those movies like, okay, so they tried to do, uh, 
uh, Ghostbusters. We don't we don't Ultra. talk we don't talk about that. One. Yeah, well, no, no, I, I but I need to here. <laughs> yeah. Um. So they tried to do Ghostbusters, like they did Ghostbusters one, Ghostbusters two, um, Ghostbusters the official video game was uh, supposed the to most serve, recent one. Yeah, was supposed to serve as Ghostbusters three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it had like the original cast in it, like you know, to hammer down Bill Murray to get who him is, to do anything really. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. like there there there's been there's been many stories out there where like movie sets have been just kind of crossing their fingers hoping that the guy will actually show up. Like yeah. that's just how aloof he is. Yeah. So for him to potentially even just like a cameo uh on this new Ghostbusters movie would be incredible. Uh, yeah. now I haven't seen the the last Ghostbusters movie. But because it doesn't exist, remember. <laughs> but here, here's 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 the thing. You remember the animated series Aladdin? Yeah. The the the, the movie the like the okay, and I say series because it was Aladdin one, Aladdin, and uh, the Return of Jafar, yeah, and then yeah. Aladdin and the King of Thieves. Right. Yeah, it's something to yeah to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. So when when the first movie came out i i went and saw it in the theater and loved it absolutely loved it and of course one of the big shining stars of that movie was the genie robin williams, robin williams yeah yes and then it came out like oh hey you know a, a, a aladdin the sequel is coming out aladdin and the return of jafar yeah. like, cool i i can i i think i saw that in the theater and i no, remember no, again you, did, you did you didn't see it in the theater because that was straight to dvd straight to video yeah okay video. so it's straight to, yeah Straight to video. I'm so sure, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so I, I got it, right? Yeah. I think I either rented it or I bought it or whatever. Five minutes into it, I'm like, this doesn't, like... It's not... Like, it wasn't I, the same. Like, I put my under on backwards. Like, something's <laughs> not right, you know? And, like, Dan Castanella, yeah. uh, incredible as Homer Simpson and an incredible voice actor, not Robin Williams. No. Not even close. Right? And, and my young mind, like... Not even looking at just just automatically assumed like the genie. It's Robin Williams. My young mind went like, nah, this is not right. No. So it this probably, this it, to me is is what uh, the King of Thieves is. Is it's a return to form. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Like like all the trailers for this look really good. So it's going to mm -hmm. be interesting to see what what the story actually is. So. But there's also other movies like the like, it got delayed again. But like the like the new Top Gun movie, Top like, Gun Maverick, like eighty six. I think that movie came out, and <laughs> now so, they yeah. decide to do a sequel. Like, I don't like Tom Cruise. I don't. I don't like. He's a Scientologist. I I, I think there's bad things that happen with Scientology. But oh, a lot. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm going to see this in the theater, but I will definitely watch it. You know, just let's be honest. The original Top Gun didn't have a whole bunch of substance to it. No, it did not. Like there's, <laughs> there's not a lot going on there. And no. in, and actually, I was talking to a guy at work about this the other day, and I get why he had a hate on for Top Gun. It's like, so they're they're in the movie Top Gun. There's they're they're saying like American fighter pilots are the best in the world, right? That's a blatant yeah. lie. Because Canadian fighter pilots have consistently been better. Like there's there's, <laughs> there's contests. They're like like they dogfight like in Cold Lake. Canadians have consistently won this against like every other country's pilots. So I, I kind of I believe that. So like I'll like I'll I'll watch it with a grain of salt. I'll be like yeah okay so it's just entertainment. It's not real. Yeah. But anyways. Um, so but, no go ahead. I was gonna, I was gonna say like you know as you're saying we have we're having a renaissance of sequels and I think that's because uh, maybe certain parts of Hollywood certain parts of the entertainment industry have caught on to the fact that we don't want reboots we want a continuation sometimes there are stories out there that are just so good and things that are left hanging that we just want an answer to we don't want a reinvention. Um, Trick says, I, I have lost all faith the new Top Gun will ever come out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. Um, yeah. But, okay, so, like, on, in, in that regards, 
something that like the trailer dropped late last week for it is like the new Spider-Man movie. It's No Way Home. <gasps> Yes. So, and I put that in, like, as soon as I saw it, I put it in our group chat. It's like, what the fuck? Look at this shit. Like, <laughs> so. I got the weirdest erection right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> so, like, I'm, like, I, I've watched all the Marvel movies. I love, like, the Spider Man movies were all great. Now, seeing, like, the, uh, the Green Goblin and Doc Ock from the, like, the Tobey Maguire movies. Yeah. In this iteration yeah. of Spider Man is fucking mind blowing. And so, as, as well, as well, like hints of the lizard as well as uh, Electro yeah. from the uh, the Amazing Spider-Man movies. With uh, Garfield, Andrew Garfield. Garfield, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I read something on, on Reddit the other day. It's like, if if for some reason, like Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are in this movie, and if they don't do the Spider-Man meme where they're pointing at each other, <laughs> if they don't do that, I'm going to be fucking pissed because that would be hilarious. <laughs> But um, no, I like I'm I'm gonna go see that one in the theaters for sure, which yeah. is weird because I didn't really watch um, Far From Home. I watched bits and pieces of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. It just like at, like because it came out what like three or four months after Endgame came out, so it was yeah. a little maybe marvelled out at the time. Yeah. So, but th this one definitely looks good. So I mean, like. Yeah. It and end game left an open wound for me like oh, yeah. iron man just died and now we're just gonna go and see iron man's ward try to fuck off yeah it's like, <laughs> like, like, like give, give me some mourning period here you know yeah, like, exactly like, fucking... i need to cry in the corner still <laughs> but yeah no like this it, this is gonna be good um i also haven't watched black widow yet um but i think yeah we, we talked about that already but uh i i might wait Wait till Black Widow. Yeah, I'm gonna wait till it's free on Disney. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, no free way. Free on Disney. Well, you know what I mean. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's free when you use somebody else's password, right? Yeah. Yes. This is yes. true. Yes. I mean, I would never yes. do that or condone that in any way, shape, or form. No, never. No, never, don't never. do that. Don't ever do that. You wouldn't download a car. <laughs> if I had a 3D printer, you know I would download a car. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, kind of in the same the same topic that we're talking about here kind of reboot stuff um i saw a trailer the other day for a new game coming out based on the evil dead series yes and it actually has bruce campbell in it like bruce yeah. campbell did the voiceover for the trailer for the video game yes so obviously we're video game nerds and we play that shit all the time um yes to me it felt like like watching the gameplay for it felt like friday the 13th Mm. how Friday the 13th should have ended up, you know, like, like with, with the, the game mechanics. So I'm, I'm pretty, yes. pretty stoked for that. Um, There's a lot of elements in Friday the 13th that come, like you feel as though that could easily translate to what is the evil dead universe oh, and the sure. evil dead world. Right. Yeah. Like uh, how Jason can, can just, dematerialize and then and then just cycle through yeah. the the map and whatever and then show up right behind things like that's yeah. that's that's like classic evil dead from the movies yeah it's, it's gonna be interesting to see how it, how it plays out right like because it's based off all of the evil dead movies and yes. ash versus evil dead the tv show which i watched the first season of and then kind of lost interest i don't know why though i so you know, no, no stranger, and certainly no secret to the fact that I am not a big fan of horror. But I sat down. I, I like the Evil Dead series because it's, there's just enough humor in it to keep me entertained. Yeah, that's fair. It, to me, it's not really. It, it's not a horror genre to me. It's more of just a like a a comedy with blood. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, we're gonna kill this zombie. Okay, like well, then they're yeah. gonna do it funny, right? Yeah. Where yeah. I mean, like, there's other movies out there that are definitely not like that. But if this game looks like as good as it does on the trailer and plays as well as it looks, I'll be that'll be my new daily driver for for games because it just lo it looks fun. Hopefully, there's enough content with it. Yeah. Um, originally this was come out this year, but now I guess it's it got pushed back to next. Which yeah, it's like everything else, like Top Gun. So yeah, uh, 
Bruce Campbell uh, has very much been like the driving force behind this thing. Uh, a, a studio came up to him and said, "Like, look, we want to do an Evil Dead game, but we want to do it right." And yeah, every single memorable character from the Evil Dead movies, Army of Darkness, and the TV series of Ash versus the Evil Dead is going to be in it. So you could play as Ash, or you can play as one of the characters from the TV series, or you could play as one of the medieval knights from Army of Darkness, Fucking or you could play as the evil dead entity itself if yeah, you, you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you can play as a demon. So that's fun. I like that. Yeah. But that's just, that again, that goes back to Friday the 13th, where you could play as Jason, which is always super fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, twist your arm to play as Jason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just got in. I, well, I was my notes here from last week. It's like we were going to talk about Free Guy as well. I mean, because it's kind of in that same thing too. It's like the new Ryan Reynolds movie, right? Um, I have a buddy that went to watch it, and he put a review up, and he's like, "It is exactly what you think it is, plus more." So I oh. guess I guess it's really well done. I I haven't like I've seen the trailers for it, and I've seen a few reviews for it. I, I'm I'm intrigued about it because I mean it's it's Ryan Reynolds right yes and he's funny and apparently he is. he's supposed to be in the final episode of Corner Gas animated. I uh, believe it. That that sounds like a Ryan Reynolds thing to do. Well, it's it's, it's a re really it's a Canadian thing. Like and he he loves this fucking place. So, I mean like that that's right up his alley. Yeah, I haven't watched Corner Gas animated yet. But yeah. <laughs> um, that's just it. It's like, huh? Brian Reynolds? Huh? Yeah. yeah what? Where? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, I, like I watched the original series, like in the in in the two thousands, and I I, I love the show because I mean it reminds me of home. Mm. While well, I was working on the road at the time, so it's like yeah, a little piece of home. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I might have to check that out. Yeah. Um, see, I haven't had a chance to see Free Guy yet, um, but. When it comes to it and just the way it looks, it looks like how I wanted Ready Player One to be. But yeah. Ready Player One was not. It was definitely not. We did a whole episode about that fucking movie. It still makes me <laughs> mad. That fucking piece of shit book part two. Like, get fucked. Oh, yeah. You you read the entire book, right? I, I, I had the audio book for it because I think I did oh, like, yeah, my yeah. Audible fucking scam where, you know, you sign up, pay for a month, and then cancel right away. Got it. <laughs> But <sighs> Free Guy looks like what Ready Player One should be, at least in my mind. Yeah. Uh, the movie. Um, yeah. Because yeah. The, the translation from Ready Player One, the book, to the movie was, <sighs> I understand why they did what they did, but at the same time, you didn't have to do what you did. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Let's try again next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't move forward with Ready yeah. Player Two. Do not write Ready Player Three either, because... Uh, uh, if they fucking do that, I'm gonna be so pissed. Yeah, because it, it, the, the the second one was such was such a piece of shit, right? Didn't did I didn't I was it you that I was trying to warn about Ready? Oh no, no yeah, it was no. you that no no I so warned I, you I'm, about I'm, Ready Player Two. That's true, yeah. but uh, I warned you about the the parallels between Ready Player One and Armada. Right, right, and I yeah. have Armada. I like the actual book. I just never. No, I, I haven't. I just can't do it. I, I can't bring myself to fucking do it. So I'm. Old. It's 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 it it's okay. So uh, again, to play devil's advocate, uh, Armada is a unique story that is intriguing. But be, being someone who has read Ready Player One and listened to Ready Player Two, you will see like okay, so. He is borrowing from his own universe for this and this and this and this. So pass. <laughs> pass. Not interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, got, I got something else, but I think we're going to save that for a little bit. You had something else you want to talk about, though, yet, I believe. Which one? I can't remember. I have a good good memory. It's just short. I like. I have I have another topic. I, I think that's more like I wouldn't say for the end of the show. But uh, what? The. Uh, well, like there, there, there's a whole list of albums turning thirty right now, but <clears throat> oh, we're, we are skipping ahead a bit. Yeah, that's um, that's, that's I'm, I just I'm having a my my brain is melting. So yeah, well, actually, you know, it, it's yeah, uh, we'll just back that segue up <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because whole, we're talking about oh, yeah, video yeah, yeah, yeah. games. Yes, right. Yes. Um, so 
Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Or no? Well, no. okay. I mean, so no. Let's 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 talk. Let's talk about like what what blew up the internet last week. Is that is that where we're gonna go with this, or did you want to do like the 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 game talk first? We'll do the game talk first yeah, because okay. it goes into that. Right, so, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, talking about movies that have been announced and excited for, and then talking about Ready Player One. Uh, now, the, the Evil Dead game. Yeah, totally looking forward to it. Uh, a different game that I'm intrigued to find out what is going to come of it is uh, a part of a series that I have been an on and off fan of for years, and that is wrestling games. Yeah. WWE 2K19, formerly of the WWE SmackDown versus Raw, blah, 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 blah. Like, the, the, there's an entire thread. And in fact, you know, one of these video game cartridges behind me is is WrestleMania on the NES. You got the original one? The one that was yeah, really, oh yeah. <laughs> really bad? I remember yeah. that game. It was fucking dog shit. Yeah. But I mean, at um, the time it was fun. Yep. Anyways. So I, the most recent wrestling game that I have is WWE 2K19. And that it has an incredible roster and a great creative character. And you can customize a lot of things yep. and share with the community as you can with a lot of other wrestling games. And it's the most up-to-date, accurate roster of active wrestlers for that year right then wwe 2k20 came out and completely shit the bed <laughs> i just re i remember seeing videos of it it was just oh. so fucking bad like um yeah. one, one of my friends uh james oh hi kit cut yes i am wearing uh foxy shirt uh, one of my friends, James, had WWE 2K20, and he's he's like showing me the clips. Like, no, this isn't from the internet. This is what happened to me like not even five minutes ago. Really? It, oh, it's just an absolute shit show. So so bad that they skipped WWE 2K21 and produced some sort of weird animated. It was puppeteer. It was like like more arcadey and not. Yeah. Fighting. Yeah, yeah. So then like, I, I, I was entertained, but at the same time, like, I, I didn't want to get it. And then they're like, hey, we're coming out with new wrestlers for this weird battle whatever game that we have for wrestling. Is it, and it Battlegrounds? Battlegrounds. That's yeah, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, one of the characters that they showed was Paige, who hasn't wrestled for quite some time. She can't wrestle anymore. No. Um, so... Here's the entrance for Paige in Battlegrounds. And it literally looked like they took a marionette oh, and no. just bounced it around because oh. her legs were just like dangling yeah. as whatever. Anyway, so, so fuck it. Not even going to bother. No. So most recently announced WWE 2K22. And not even a week after they announced WWE 2K22 is coming out. Oh, WWE 2K22 is going to be delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, which which is which is entertaining in its own right because okay it's gonna be delayed why because they want to make sure it fucking works before they release it to the public well that's fucking smart for the first time <laughs> but, but let's be honest wwe has not made some fucking real smart decisions in the last year you know yep. re releasing some pretty big names you know like braun Strowman yep. and uh bray Fiend. wyatt yeah it's like yeah. Like, what are you doing? And then, like, I didn't watch, like, I, I'll watch the pay-per-views occasionally, but, like, I didn't watch yeah. SummerSlam, but, like, Becky Lynch coming back is awesome, but the way that she beat Bianca Belair is bullshit. <clears throat> oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. It's, it, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's stupid. It's, it's, fuck, it's bad writing. Yeah. So, uh, of the bad decisions and of all the releases is part of the reason why WWE 2K22 is going to be delayed. Part of the reason why. So... 2K Games and WWE are pissed at each other. Surprise. Uh, WWE is pissed at 2K Games because of this delay, and they're also very upset with what happened during 2K20. Yeah. 2K Games is pissed at WWE going like, if we release the game on time, it's going to have the most out-of-date roster in history. Yeah. <laughs> there are going to be wrestlers in the game that are working for your competing company. So many of them. Like all of them. All of them. Yeah, it's so bad. So bad. So with that being said, there is another game coming out, a wrestling game. AEW is coming out with its own wrestling game. Really? And they they have come out 
and said that they want AEW's wrestling game to be the spiritual successor to WWF's No Mercy on the N64. Oh, yeah, that was fucking classic. The, it, which, yeah. Oh, like, like, no, like such an incredible game. That, like, that's a long, like, I think that's pretty similar similar to like uh, SmackDown, like Know Your Role, like those ones, like back, like that era. Yeah, those were the, like, not like real cartoony and just beat the shit out of each other. It's, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, and it was a story that branched and just continued to yeah. branch. And, you know, a loss meant you went in this direction, not just game over. And yeah. So I'm excited for this, but also it raises the questions like, okay, so who's going to be in that roster? <laughs> so, so, so the, the, I have a perfect segue for this. The last WWE game that I own is mm. WWE 13. Hmm. And the guy that was on the cover of WWE 13 just made his, well, like his predicted. Uh, Worst uh, kept secret. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, his entrance into AEW. And it was yeah. CM Punk was on the cover of it. So I like, I have the TSN app on my phone, you know, for sports, whatever. Yeah. Obviously, because it's sports. Um, <laughs> I never get notifications for AEW stuff ever you know it's whatever like and so that Monday or whatever hell day it was my phone vibrates so I look it's like oh something big is happening on AEW right now I'm like Friday it was a Friday it was Friday yeah I'm like okay that's interesting <laughs> never get notifications for that yeah so I turn it on yeah and it's, it's like they, they did it right it's like oh yeah his music hit he came out and it's like the fucking roof popped off that place it was Oh, awesome. yeah, yeah. like like everybody knew like he he was tweeting it's like yeah i'm gonna be in milwaukee or whatever the hell it was i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna be there you know it's chicago like, chicago yeah yeah like he was in milwaukee the next night or some shit whatever but uh yeah. it's like they they did it right though they like there was no there's no like just him running in and you know hitting somebody it's like here here's your mic yeah. <laughs> go fucking go go talk go go say whatever the hell you want it's perfect yeah. So when uh when that happened uh like two Fridays ago now. Um was it two Fridays ago? Was uh, it that long? Yeah. Three Fridays ago. It's two. Cause it wasn't this past Friday, it was the Friday before. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So when it happened two Fridays ago, um I I was sitting at home and just wasn't doing much and like, oh wait a minute, it's it's rampage, right? Yeah. Throw on a TV and just in the middle of his of his initial opening speech, yeah, and had the crowd in the palm of his hand, and said everything right, and it was clearly not scripted. It, it was it was a situation of like hand over the mic, off you go. He could have said um, everything wrong, and that crowd still <laughs> it wouldn't have pop. mattered. Yeah, it d didn't matter. Right, he, he could have just came out and shit on everybody, and everybody would have been yeah. kissing down both legs. Um, so he, he came out, he spoke his mind, he made the distinction between professional wrestling and sports entertainment, and that was an under-the-table uh, jab. Yeah. And he brought up how he was feeling and why he left and did what he did. He apologized for disappointing anyone, and then he capped the whole thing with, on your way out, grab yourself an ice cream bar and i fucking <laughs> laugh holy shit yeah, never perfect. before and i've been so jealous about not having an ice cream bar <laughs> it was perfect and apparently it like was. he like he had this planned with that ice cream company for for like a year and a half oh yeah he's like somehow like it's like they just needed to find a time when it worked and that, that was perfect so i mean yeah. like that's exactly how you get everybody on your side <laughs> like right there so I like and I think we talked to us like I texted you or whatever. It's like like I, I liked his entrance, but I still think he should have came out to Kill Switch Engage instead because I'm a bigger Kill Switch Engage fan. But I I agree, but I understand what they why they did what oh, they yeah. did. Oh yeah. Hundred percent I like I get it. It's just my own personal like it's like it's because <clears throat> everything is about me, right? You know, it's like I <laughs> like it's like no, it should have been Kill Switch Engage and not called to personality. But yeah, whatever. It is what it is. So, and I'm pumped that he's back. I'm pumped yeah. that he's actually going to be in the ring. Let's see what he does with it, right? Yeah. 
Like, so with, with with that being said, um, like like I said, I I caught the middle of the speech, and so you know we live in a world where you can go and rewind. So yeah. I rewound, and I watched it for the first time, and like had the had the volume up as yeah. loud as my neighbors could fucking annoy, <laughs> and they you're right, you're absolutely right. They the 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 show intro hit. They introduced the announcers. They didn't say a damn thing. That's the, the crowd. Yeah, the crowd just started going nuts, and they were just like, "Q." And like, I'm getting goosebumps just talking yeah. about it. And when he came out and dropped to his knees, and you could see that he was yeah. just taking it all in. And there was there was people in the crowd crying, and fucking, I was like, "Q." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> and like the, you're absolutely right. Like he did everything perfect. Now yeah. coming out to cult of personality by living color was done deliberately because it is the last thing that he came out to in a WWE. Yeah. And so it is the most recognizable thing when it comes to CM Punk coming out. Now I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in time he reverted back to kill switch engage maybe um, at all out like maybe the, like this the, the, upcoming sunday yeah um yes. because it is in chicago and kill switch engage is from chicago yes so so we'll see it, we'll it, see it, i don't know if it, i'm gonna get a chance to watch it but i mean I'll, i'm sure i'll hear about it on reddit or whatever the next day <laughs> like i i, I, I unfortunately have to i work might again I might, I might actually get myself a pay per view for the first time in eons. Yeah, because I want, I want to see it. So it, it it's worth it. You know, yeah. I mean, what does a pay per view even cost nowadays? Probably sixty, seventy bucks. I don't know, but I can look it up right now. Yeah. And yes, Kit Kat, I have never before been so jealous about an ice cream bar than I had that <laughs> night. A E W pay per view, twenty twenty one. It's, it's all got, out. It, it's got to be sixty or seventy bucks, or or maybe 40. it's four, forty. Okay, no, that's, forty. That's, forty American. So what? So fifty Canadian. Fifty five ish. Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Get get a couple buddies over and you know split it. That's what we used to do. Yeah. Okay, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. We go to like back in the day, like in the like late nineties, early two thousand. We go to a buddy's place and everybody throw five bucks in. Yeah. And Usually or pizza or wings yeah, or yeah. yeah yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so like the last topic we're going to talk about, is like, it's kind of, it's kind of a segue to, well, it, it's a music thing anyways. So yeah. 30 years ago, around this time, there was a block of albums that were released that were like, to put it lightly, like iconic. Yes. So in August of, of yeah 1991 metallica's black album was released uh the first pearl jam album was released guns and roses use your illusion one and two was released nirvana's nevermind was released all around this time and they all turned 30 this year which is it's mind-blowing that that like and there, there's more records there that i like uh oh uh soundgarden's bad motorfinger was released around this time too mm. it, it's it's crazy to think like these albums that stand the test of time all came out within weeks of each other, you know, like I, okay. So like, I specifically remember when Nirvana's Nevermind came out. Right. Um, I remember like we had, again, I talked about this before, like the old pirated dish. I remember watching the world premiere for smells like teen spirit on MTV back in 91. Yeah. They went from playing like hair metal all the time, you know, like rat and Cinderella and fucking whatever. Yeah. You, you like after like smells like teen spirit came out you didn't you didn't hear that music anymore it was just no. gone they 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 made that transition from hair metal to grunge in about fucking four seconds it's like nobody <laughs> wants to listen to that anymore everybody got rid of their fucking their hairsprayed teased out hair and then <laughs> fucking put a fucking flannel jacket on and fucking you know got depressed and sat in the rain that's how quick it was i remember the fucking change for that. it was nuts but it was awesome <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. It's not, nothing to make fun of. Yeah. Um, so in the same vein of that is uh, Metallica is doing a 30th anniversary of the Black Album. Yes. What? So they're, they're, they're re, they remastered it. They, uh, and they're, they're putting out a special edition where they got 
I think 30 bands, 30 to cover the 12 songs that were on the black album. So, um, there's some pretty weird fucking acts. I don't, I can't, I don't know the names of these acts off the top of my head because it just came to me. But, um, like some like electro pop music, like doing like Enter Sandman. It's fucking super weird. Just look it up. It's it's uh it's nuts. But it's something like I was gonna buy the 30th anniversary vinyl set, mm. but it was gonna be like 450 bucks because it's like fucking like 12 di- like 12 vinyls. And pictures and shit like I, I just couldn't justify it but like there's like there's a ton of stuff there that's really interesting and last night I was sitting here and uh, they posted something on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it's like check this out it's the uh, the uh, Jason Newstead gave them permission to give out this track that ended up being my friend of misery my friend of misery is like it's a famously bass heavy song that mm. he wrote as an instrumental like there's no guitars in it it's just it's him and it's like he plays over each other but like it's nuts but right. it turned into a different song but uh yeah i'll maybe put a, a link for that up on the facebook page just uh because to me i mean as a bass player i mean it was just nuts but so like what, what are you finding there about the uh... uh phoebe bridgers chris stapleton weezer uh, yeah miley cyrus elton john yo-yo ma Chad Smith, Jesus, did they just tap anyone? Pretty much, yeah. But, uh, you, but you look at it like you don't know anybody that doesn't know a song or two off that album. True. Everybody does. Everybody, like our age anyways, grew up at least, ha- like you knew somebody that had that album close to you, right? Like I'm, I'm, I, had it, <laughs> like, I had it like yeah. three or four times, right? Yeah, I, it's it's like I guarantee you, I've bought that album over and over and over again, oh, at yeah. least six times, be, because I have like just overused or whatever medium I had. Still, it yeah, on. yeah. But I mean, I I fucking my band covers Enter Sandman for fuck's sakes, and I sing it like it's fucking. It, it, you you can't not deny the the popularity and the importance of that album, right? No. So. But it, it's interesting when it comes to Metallica in around that year, because a lot of the hardcore fans, the metalheads, uh, the ones who went to the concerts for like Ride the Lightning and yeah. Kill 'Em All, and they they were upset because they made a music video for one. Yeah, yeah. And then they were beside themselves upset because they made the Black Album. Oh, yeah. It was two very different albums, right? Like you go oh, from Injustice 100%. for All to the Black Album. It's now they invested, weird. they invested like every penny they had into the production, the studio, the people behind the scenes, the marketing for the Black Album. Why? Because they wanted to fucking make money. They wanted to have the platform and get noticed. What? What band does not? They they did exactly that. Yeah. You know, like they went from being, you know, like like a pretty big name in the like the metal scene to being a pretty big name in, you know, everything else, right? Yeah. 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 Um so it's 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 funny because like I I'll, I'll play a couple of songs on my radio show and when I bring up yes, Miley Cyrus Metallica, yes, Trick Tur- Turbo, yeah. yes, yeah. I know. Yeah. Um when I bring up facts about the Black Album and the fact that, you know, like a couple of relationships ended because of the Black Album within Metallica. And yeah. like over a million dollars was used to get the production and blah, blah, blah. Every so often, some Jagoff will will text or, or message or even call and go like, yeah, that's the album where they lost their fans. I went, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> because okay. after the Black Album, they just ceased to exist, yeah. right? And put out what? five albums after it four yeah five. <laughs> yeah five five <laughs> load reload uh saint anger death magnetic and uh garage Inc. wasn't really a, that was a cover album though yeah yeah anyway, that's true yeah yeah so so what, 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 what are you spinning this week there bud well i mean come on you know this i'm gonna add a metallica song so the question is which metallica song off the black album are you gonna add 
That way we don't have the same one. My friend of misery. Hundred percent. That's a it, it's, it's awesome it's, song. Because it's I, a deep cut song. Oh, I, I, I can play it. Well, I can play. Part, <laughs> I, I can play parts of it, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So I I don't know. I like there, there there's a ton of really good songs on that album. You know, yeah. like like the struggle within and yes. uh oh fuck. It's gone. It's gone. Oh. Well, I was gonna throw like. It, it'd be too on the nose to throw in Enter Sandman. Yeah. Okay. So for me, sad but true. Yeah, yeah. That that's that that was my second pick there. Sad but true. Because yeah. because they like they play it all the time. Yes. Of do. course, you know you, you go and see him in concert. You're going to see Enter Sandman. They're they're going to play it. But uh, sad but true is definitely up there too. And it, you know it's pretty heavy. But it is. Um, yeah. I was telling you before the show. It's like I've been I've been listening to a lot of like off the Metallica topic now. I've been listening to a lot of City and Color again. Yeah, I don't know why. It's like it's the because the season's changing. It's getting colder. I don't. It's just one of those things where I, it's like the weather changes. I start listening to like depressing acoustic music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. It's like oh, I'm I'm gonna change my pick now. Hold on. What? Because I had something else in mind. Uh, okay. What's What's the city and color song that you wanted to add? Uh, Coming home. Just because it says Saskatoon in it, which is weird. Oh yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that's the first song that I heard by Dallas Green, City and Color, at like when I first heard heard him, and right. uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know, it, it just resonates. It it, it, it the song's like 16, 17 years old now, and just it still hits hard, like like in a acoustic depressing sort of way, but you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that that's my pick off that. That whole album's great, by the way. Like uh, seeing colors, sometimes it's so good that I own it twice on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have an original pressing from like 2005 or 2006, and then uh, earlier this year they re-released it, and I bought it again for some stupid reason. Because like, <laughs> hey, I need this in my life. Yeah, yeah, that one. There it is. That one. And. And again, because I'm stupid uh, that way. Is there any actual difference to it? Oh yeah, the uh, the original ones all like it's colored. Mm. Um, but like, and it was remastered and whatever. So, but anyway. Uh, so what's uh? Oh, well, I I, I, I have the... a, I have a third pick too. So, <laughs> yeah, because no, you, you forced my hand. But anyway. All right, sure. Um, so on the on the thread of uh, seasons and colors and sitting in the rain and being depressed and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought it would be kind of a, a good match to add to your city and color with Days of the New and Shelf in the Room. That's a really good tune. And, you know, that, that's, that's got that, that post-grungy feel, like, from the early 90s. So, I mean, that's... Yeah. yeah. So, Shell, I had to write that down because I forget things. Uh, yeah. Um, I like Days of the New, but I hate touch peel stand whatever i fucking hate that song because i heard it too many times well yeah and and that's just it like i'm looking at uh the spotify spot of spotify 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 uh profile for days in a new and touch peel and stand has 48 million plus plays and yeah it, it was their breakout hit um now anyone who is a fan of days in a new will probably be just as disappointed or felt just as disappointed by their second album as I was yeah. because the first album days of the new, the self-titled album was great. It was raw. It was, it was lyrics and a lot of acoustic guitar and a little bit of drums. And that was it. The second album was studio magic. We'll just crank this shit up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not good. Not good. So no. great song though. The, yes. um, so my my last one though is like I, I I was at work and I was thinking about I can't I was thinking about something yeah and I was thinking about like I think I think it was, I was bringing back I'm gonna bring back my my Kobo to work and I was thinking about Stephen King books that I should read again and I fucking thought of Pet Cemetery oh just because it's a great but well, the movie's terrible yeah. not terrible but you know it's got it's it's different. But Stephen King asked the Ramones to cover or to write a song for that movie. 
And really? It's, it's called Pet Cemetery by the Ramones. And it is, it's fucking weird, man. But it's fucking, it's the Ramones, so you know it's weird. But it's good. It's fucking really good. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely add that one onto the, the, the Found Signals uh, podcast fucking thing. Speaking of Lost Signals, I guess you can check us out on Twitter and Facebook. And I'm not on Instagram yet because I just keep forgetting to make the Instagram account. Uh, and also lostsignals.ca, which I do need to update because it's been a few minutes since I did it. Because I keep yeah. forgetting to do that too and it's been busy as shit. But uh, yeah, there, there's uh, links to all the episodes up there. And maybe I should maybe do some blog posts there too at some point. Maybe you want to write one or something. You know? Sure. Why yeah. Not? Yeah. 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 Cool man. Got got before, anything? Got anything else there? Yeah. yeah. But before we wrap up, I can actually add a third one as well that is akin to Pet Cemetery, kind of. Okay. It was actually going to be my original pick before I brought up Stand, a Shelf in the Room by Days of the New, and that's Doug and the Slugs and Tomcat Prowl. Doug and the Slugs. That's funny. Uh, How is that funny? Uh, no, because we I worked with a guy at, at work with. His name was Doug, and he worked with two really lazy people, so we called him Doug and the Slugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Uh, my, one of my favorite all-time uh, bands from northern, uh, the lower mainland of British Columbia, Doug and yeah, the yeah. Slugs. They're, they're pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, anyway, So yeah. B- before, before we wrap, uh, just a quick suggestion that if anyone out there uh, wants to download or use any sort of audio streaming service... I recently discovered that um, the Amazon Music app, which comes free or comes included if you have any sort of Amazon subscription, um, it is kind of cheeky with how they go about their numbers. And what I mean is you can download your entire list of podcasts or, or songs or what have you, but over a period of time, the app will remove those podcasts or songs from your mobile device, which will cause you to have to download them again. Uh, okay. Yeah. Which is a way of inflating download numbers. Interesting. Yeah. I should maybe... We're not on Amazon yet, I don't think. We are not. No. Uh, uh... The, to, to, to be a podcast on Amazon Music, uh, Amazon Podcast, you actually have to go through a different route. So yeah, that's something I'll look into anyways. So I now I have I I'm I have Spotify on my phone now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anyways, this has been episode 19 of Lost Signals. I was actually had a whole bit about the number 19 that I was gonna get into, but I completely forgot about it till now. But anyways, it's what it is. Uh, my mm-hmm. name is Daryl. I'm JD. And we will see you guys out there. Take care. <laughs>